Hi guys, in this lecture video, I will be discussing the hydrogenation reaction of alkene. Now, there's a many different types of hydrogenation reaction. We can actually do hydrogenation reaction on alkene, alkyne, and nitrile, and many other functional groups as well. But here, in this case right here, we will restrict our discussion to the hydrogenation reaction of alkene. And again, this is a type of addition reaction in which the molecular hydrogen or the two hydrogen are being added across the carbon-carbon double bond. So in this case, the alkene. So in the course of this reaction right here, an alkene is being reduced to form an alkene. And most hydrogenation reactions produce a pretty high yield, so we can expect up to 100 or very close in the high 90% yield. So by taking an alkene and reacting this with hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. So this, in this case right here, this is a metal catalyst. Now there are several types of catalyst that we will be discussing later. But a metal catalyst is a very common type of way how we would perform hydrogenation reaction. And hydrogenation reaction has been found to be somewhat stereospecific. So in this case right here, we will be able to produce some products, but not, and not the other. So basically, we will not be producing a mixture of various uh, diastereomer and so on. So in this case, this is what we have observed right here. So in the course of a hydrogenation reaction, we would only observe a pair of enantiomer, but we do not observe the other diastereomer. But here in this case right here, only one pair of enantiomer are being produced. And what we have also discussed discovery as follow: the reaction proceeds in a syn addition. Now this syn addition right here, syn means the same. In this case, same side. So the two hydrogen in the course of the reaction are being added to this carbon and carbon bond. And now the hydrogen are added to the same side of this double bond. It can either be added to this top face of the double bond or the bottom face of the double bond. So the two hydrogen must be added to the same side, but not one on top and the other one on the bottom. So that is the meaning to this with syn addition right here. So the two products that we observe as follow. So where the hydrogen are being added in the back or the hydrogen are added in the front. So here in this case right here, these two molecules right here are pairs of enantiomer. And we do not observe the author diastereomer. So here in this case right here, this pair of enantiomer in which one hydrogen is added to the bottom and the other one is added on top. So we do not observe this pair of enantiomer right here. But again, we only observe one set of enantier enantiomer only. And this is why we call this syn addition. So that's something very important to remember. Now, both of this enantioma get produced, okay? And uh, uh, most of the time, it is a racemic mixture where we form 50% of this and 50% of the other enantioma. And uh, this, if we were to be look at the yield of this reaction, then anytime we are producing a racemic mixture, then that is not really desirable right there, right? Because we lose it. 50% of one of the enantiomer that we want. So therefore, there has been a lot of studies and to basically figure out a way how we can favor one of the enantiomer but not the other. So we will discuss some of the method, how we have been able to achieve that in a little bit. But now, let's talk about, talk about the role of the metal catalyst in this hydrogenation reaction. And we also call this catalytic hydrogenation reaction as well. So let's now discuss the first types of catalyst, the metal catalyst. So a variety of metal has been used, for example, a mixture of palladium carbon, or this platinum, or palladium, or nickel. So these are some of the metal that have been used before. And these types of metal right here, uh, and the reagent that consistent of this metal right here, are then referred to as a heterogeneous catalyst. The reason why because they do not dissolve in the reaction medium. So when we in we add in our organic substance 
and when in this metal catalyst, then they do not dissolve in each other. So therefore, this is referred to as a heterogeneous catalyst. And so the role of this metal is as follows. They provide as a surface that will then come in and interact with the hydrogen first. So here in this case right here, here are the metal surface. So this metal do not dissolve in a reaction made medium. So therefore have a surface to it. And this surface then come in and interact with the hydrogen. So the, hyd the hydrogen uh, uh, would then come in and interact with them. And due to the interaction between hydrogen and this metal surface, the hydrogen molecule, the two hydrogen molecules are somewhat partially broken up already. And they basically interact and get stuck to this metal surface right here. And so on the next step, what happened is as the alkene, our double bond, begin to come in and interact with this metal, then first the alkene have to basically position itself in such a way and it come down to interact with the hydrogen on this metal surface. And because of it, therefore the two hydrogen are then being added to the same side of this double bond. So that's what happened right there. So the mechanism is as follows. So again, the double bond come in, acting as a nucleophile, pick up one of this hydrogen, producing a cation here on the other carbon. And now the other hydrogen from the metal carbon will now act in as a nucleophile, come in and attack that. So in this case right here, the two hydrogen are being added to the same side of the double bond because the double bond have to lie planar. So it first have to orientate so it wouldn't be flat and it coming down and interact with this metal surface. And therefore the two hydrogen are now added to the same side of the double bond. So that's how we end up with this two product right here or this syn addition. Let's now try a few examples to make sure that we know how to write and predict the product of these types of reaction. So here in this case, we now have this double bond reacting with hydrogen in the presence of platinum. So here we're using platinum as a metal catalyst. So we will then see that first, uh, so this molecule right here, the double bond, it has to basically flat. This is a flat, almost a flat molecule because of this double bond. So therefore, it will line down and parallel to the surface of the metal. So in this case right here, we will then the product that we get it will then be the syn products, and that will then mean the following. So we can basically have the hydrogen being added here on the back, and this hydrogen right here in the back as well. So that will then push our methyl group up. So that's what happened here in this product right here, and. Uh, and so the and the other product that we will also be getting would then be the other enantioma, where now the hydrogen would then be added on the front, on top. So here we can put this hydrogen point up, and now this hydrogen right here would then be pointed up as well on the other carbon. So that would then make this methyl group right here pointed in the back. So that's what we have right here. So the stereochemistry on these two carbon right here are opposite of each other, and they are a racemic mixture. And let's now try the example 18 as well. So here in this case, again, we are taking this bond and we are reacting with hydrogen in the presence of nickel. So nickel is another catalyst that can also be used. So in this case right here, again, so we'll be adding the two hydrogen to this two double bond right here in the same orientation. So that would then uh, produce the following. So here in this case, let's say the hydrogen is then added in the back. Then now our methyl group would then be pointed in the front. And on this hydrogen right here, it'll be all added on the back as well. And so in this case right here, then we can we then see that this carbon right here, it is not a chiral center, right? Because we can have a hydrogen point in the back, but then there is another hydrogen that is already pointing in the front already. So this is not a chiral center. So therefore, we do not have to worry about its stereochemistry because this is not a chiral center. But the other carbon, this carbon right here, once the hydrogen is being added to it, it will not become a chiral center. So it's important that we specify the position of the hydrogen and the methyl group here in this case. And so that is one of the enantioma that would be produced 
and the author and then terma would then be the author product where now the methyl group are now pointed in the back so they are a racemic mixture so pretty easy to predict the product of a hydrogenation reaction and now let's discuss the author method of also doing hydrogenation by using the other types of uh, catalysts. So it turned out that uh, through a lot of research, we have also figured out all the way of doing hydrogenation by using all the types of catalysts. And the one that we will be discussing would be the homogeneous catalyst. So this homo cat catalyst right here are basically consistent of catalysts that is soluble in the reaction medium. And so, and the most common types of the homogeneous catalyst for the hydrogenation is referred to as the Wilkinson's catalyst. And the Wilkinson catalyst is basically consistent of this substance right here. So basically have this triphenylphosphine bonded to this rhodium right here, and then there's a chlorine in it. So overall, this catalyst right here is referred to as the Wilkinson's catalyst. Now, so when we use this Wilkinson catalyst right here, we also observe a syn addition as well. So it's uh, it's stereochemistry and its stereosophisticity is very similar to the uh, to the metal uh, um, a catalyst because they both produce the syn addition. Okay, so here in this case, if we were to buy, be using H two along with this Wilkinson catalyst above, then we would also be observing the syn addition as well. So we get the product with the two hydrogen point in the back here, and the author and interior with the two hydrogen added to the front. But in both cases, we are producing a racemic mixture. And again, as I mentioned earlier already, producing a racemic mixture of two and enteroma in chemistry is not really desirable because that basically means that you're losing 50 percent of the author and enteroma that you want so the question now is is it possible that we create or perform hydrogenation reaction in which that we can favor the formation of one and enteroma over the author but not an equal pair of the two of them so these types of um, synthesis right here are referred to as the asymmetric um, synthesis because so anytime that we have selective selectivity for one and interior over the other, we can call them an asymmetric synthesis. So is it possible that we do asymmetric catalytic hydrogenation reaction? And the answer is yes. Again, after many years of extensive research, uh, so we have found a few reagents that were able to do that. And so one of the reagents were actually discovered by knowledge. And he was basically studying the Wilkinson catalyst and make modification of the Wilkinson catalyst as follows. So here would be the triphenylphosphine ligands that are present in the Wilkinson catalyst. And so what he did, what knowledge did, was that he basically modified this reagent right here to have a phenyl group here, a methyl group here, and a propyl group here. But then basically, if we just look at this reagent, this uh, phos this entire part right here, then this e chiral versus this e a chiral right here. So the Wilkinson catalyst is a chiral. We have the a chiral phosphine ligand versus this knowledge reagent right here now consists of a chiral phosphine ligand and because of it it will then come in and interact with the two different sides of the cow alkene differently therefore if the alkene have to come in and interact with this reagent in one conformation or the other conformation but not both of them equally and therefore there's now selectivity so if we were to look at a few examples then here in this case right here let's say we do in this hydrogenation reaction and now we're using a chiral catalyst, not a Wilkinson catalyst. Then we are now able to produce this S right here, an enteroma, but not the R. So it, it basically select, select, it, it selected the producing this S, but not the R. So that's what happened right there. Okay. And in addition to, the, uh, to this reagent from above, then there's also another reagent that he called the BINAP reagent. And so this reagent right here does the very same thing as to this knowledge catalyst right here. 
And so here's an example right here. We do do an hydrogenation of this alkene in the presence of hydrogen. And now this binap reagent right here. And this is its chemical structure. So here in this case right here, we are producing a 95% an enteromeric excess of this one enantiomer, but not both of them. Now, uh, figuring out which enantiomer even favor it really be on the scope of this class because in order to do that, we have to study how this reagent interact with the alkene. And so, and that how we can figure out whether it form one enantiomer over the other. But in our class, again, we're not going to focus on that because that be on the scope of this class. We just have to remember that we'll be able to produce one of the enantiomer over the other by using this BINAP and a modification of this Wilkinson catalyst right here by knowledge. Okay.